Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here from Analytics Course, and I wanted to talk to you about IP tracking in Google Analytics. One of our students sent in a question about what type of IP address information is collected by Google Analytics, and whether or not you can go into Google Analytics after the fact, after the data has been processed, and take a look at those IP addresses and see what somebody did. And so I'm gonna answer that question and talk more in general about Google's data collection policies, how things work, and where you can look to see if you can track people by IP addresses, and at the end of this video, I'm going to share some information about a new privacy regulation that's happening in the European Union that might affect you if you do any business in the EU. So you might want to check this thing out and learn some more about data privacy, IP address collection, and even some methods within Google Analytics that you can use to get rid of IP addresses entirely. So we're going to talk about IP tracking in Google Analytics. And I want to answer the question, what is the role of IP addresses in Google Analytics? What role do they play, if any, in the collection of data, the display of data, and our overall process of using Google Analytics? Now let's start with how data is processed in Google Analytics. Here's a picture that I've been showing for years about Google Analytics data, how it's collected. I didn't create this image, I believe it came from Google. But basically there's four components of Google Analytics. There's collection of data, there's configuration, there's Google actually processing the data that comes in, and then there's reporting. Now, what I look at these things as is basically multiple separate sources of data that get used before you get a report in Google Analytics. Now, most of us think of Google Analytics purely in the form of the reports. We go into Google Analytics, we look at a report, we see our data. That's been scrubbed, it's been cleaned, it's been processed, it's been fixed by Google, it's been fixed by our own organizations with filters, all kinds of different stuff. But basically, this is the view of how Google Analytics works. And within that view, IP addresses are collected by Google Analytics at the collection point. Now the collection point is that piece of JavaScript that we put on our site that collects data. It's basically the code that says do Google Analytics and tell them that this is my account. Now if you've taken an analytics course, you've probably heard this a thousand times. Do Google Analytics, tell them that this is my account. But if you're not familiar with my analytics course or if you're just new to this, basically Google Analytics puts code on your website. That's how they know that they're tracking people on your site. And that's the collection mechanism. That's what we call collection. There's different ways to do it. There's Google Tag Manager you can use for collection. There's gtag.js that you can use. There's analytics.js. There's ga.js. There's even something called urchin.js, which is way old, and hopefully you're not using that at this point. But those are the different ways you can collect data in Google Analytics. And each of these things has the ability to collect an IP address. In fact, they want to collect an IP address at the collection point because it's an important way of distinguishing different characteristics about that traffic. Now, you also have the ability to completely make your IPs anonymous even at the collection point. Now, there's a little function you can put into your Google Analytics. Now, this is using the analytics.js version of Google Analytics, and you can say anonymize IP addresses, and you can do it for all the hits or just a single hit that comes into your website. So if somebody were to, say, opt out of tracking on your site at a certain point, you could say, okay, I'm gonna anonymize the IP for that hit moving forward based on them opting out of tracking. Or you can just say, I'm not gonna do it for anybody on here. Now it depends on your, now it depends on the location you are in, whether you need to do this or not. It depends on your own laws and your legal reasons for doing this. But if you do market to a place or live in a place where you want to anonymize IPs, Google Analytics gives you the ability to do that. You can anonymize IPs. But if you don't select that option, IP addresses are brought into Google Analytics, and then you can use that to apply a filter to your account. So you can filter out data based on IPs. You can block yourself, your internal traffic. That's a very common way to do it. You can also give special treatment to certain IPs if you wanted to. So you can either block or include different IPs, give them treatments within your configuration of analytics, and then Google will process that data. Now at the processing point, which we see the orange box here, Google Analytics does not process IP addresses. So when they do their processing, the IP address doesn't make it through. And it definitely doesn't make it through into the reports section. Now here's a look at the filtering view. Now the most common filter that people put in place, especially when they're just getting started, is their home IP address. So you might put in an IP address here and filter it out. That's exactly how this ends up working. You can filter out your own IP address and then Google will decide not to process it. Or that filter will suppress all of your hit data for 
that particular session that you're on or anybody who comes in through that IP address. So that's how IP address filtering works. And by the time that it makes it into the reports, either your suppression of the IP address has already happened, the anonymization of the IP address has happened, or Google's processing of its own has eliminated the IP addresses. The final database that Google Analytics has, the reporting database, has no mention of an IP address anywhere. It doesn't exist. It's gone. It's vanished. It's been eliminated from the equation because they do not report on IP addresses in Google Analytics. And it's a decision they made, and that's just how it works. And it turned out to be a pretty good decision with some privacy laws that are coming into effect that I'll talk about at the end of this video. The other thing you'll notice is that if you put a filter in there for an IP and you try to verify it, Google Analytics will not let you verify your filter. The reason why you can't verify your filter is because Google has already eliminated the IP address from your reports, so you could never actually see whether or not that IP would be there because Google doesn't even know that it's there. They've already eliminated it. So your filtering on the front end interface of reporting, the reporting interface, does not allow you to even see if that filter would work. Because they don't have the IP address handy, they can't even take a look at it. It's already been eliminated. So you might be looking at this and say, okay, that's cool, but is there any way, Jeff, do you know some kind of secret where we can track visits by IP? And actually, this is a question that gets asked all the time, and this was asked on our course forum by Kate, and she wonders, is there a way to drill down and get GA data by IP address? Basically want to deep dive into specific data, specific IP addresses, what they do, how long they linger, all that stuff. Can you do this? Unfortunately, the answer here is no. It's a resounding no. You cannot get this data. You can't view IP information. And the reason why you can't is one, for privacy reasons. There's legal reasons. Now, it might be legal in your country to view by IPs, but other countries may not make that legal, so there might be some problems there. Or it could be for Googly reasons. Google made a decision a long time ago, dating back to their urchin days, that they're not going to be tracking and letting you report by IP address. And so that's just how it goes. Google has their reasons for doing it. Whatever it is, you don't have that functionality within Google Analytics. Now, I will tell you that there are other tools that allow you to do IP type tracking and seeing how long people linger on your site and just learning more information about them. For example, landing page tools will often have an IP address capability where you can see somebody who viewed your landing page or submitted a form. You can track them by IP address. Now, this is part of the server logs. This is part of basic overall web architecture where you want to see who's on your site by IP address in case they do something wrong or in case they try to hack into your system. There's all kinds of reasons why you want to see the IP address from your server perspective and many landing page tools will allow you to see that. And so for me with my landing page tools I can actually see what IP address somebody came in from when they submitted a form on my website. Marketing automation tools, many marketing automation tools. I happen to use Drip, and I've used Active Campaign in the past. They allow you to put a piece of code on their site, and then you can identify your known users, and you can track what they do. So if you want to get into what their IP address is, you could do that within your marketing automation tool. I'm not sure how long that will last for, but as of right now, marketing automation tools will show you the IP address of the person who visited your site. CRM tools, any tool that keeps track of your customer relationship management. Think about it as your sales database. Many CRM tools allow you to do website tracking where you can see if a known lead has visited your site, how long they've been there, and you can see their IP address as well. User analytics tools like Kissmetrics, Mixpanel, a lot of these will give you the data around the IP address that somebody used to get to your site. These tools will often do a better job of identifying known users and keeping track of them and doing all kinds of fun stuff than Google Analytics will. If you want to track personally identifiable information and tie it to analytics, Google Analytics is not your tool, but other tools like the ones that I just mentioned definitely can get you somewhere. And web hosting tools. Again, server logs, website architecture, anything happening to do with your website, they will often keep a track of IP addresses because that is an important thing to monitor, and IP addresses can be impactful on your overall website experience, both from a negative perspective, trying to prevent negative things from happening, but also from a positive perspective where you might be able to whitelist the IPs that you want to see. So IP addresses are the only way that you can protect yourself against anonymous attacks and bad things happening. And so your tools, many of your tools will have that built in where you can look at it. Now, Google has a policy where you can't. Other ones have a policy where you can. And again, I'm not sure how long it's going to be possible to do this. But as of right now, as of the time I record this video, many web hosting tools have this capability where you can track by IP address. Now, I will say, be careful what you track. Just because you can do it, just because it's legal in your area, doesn't mean that it's a good idea or that it's legal all over the world. And there's something I want to draw your attention to, and it's called GDPR. 
the European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, and it's something that is coming out in May of 2018. And basically, it's going to change the way that we can process things. It's going to do a lot with privacy, and it's going to really shake up the analytics industry and shake up some of the things that we've always known and make things more difficult as marketers, but better for people who are using the internet. And so make sure that you read up on this thing and learn some more about it because it does impact your future. And my final thoughts are that tracking is fun, but make sure you understand the laws that you work within before you do any tracking. Make sure that you're doing this legally and that you are following the rules. Just because your tool allows you to do it doesn't mean that it is pro-law. So make sure that you check that all out and do things the right way. And join our free Google Analytics mini course at analyticscourse.net. If you want to learn about Google Analytics, if you want to get in touch with us here at Jefflytics, check out this course. It is awesome. And we teach you Google Analytics from the ground up. So if you found this to be groundbreaking, if you're like, wow, I didn't understand any of this stuff. I didn't know it was happening here. We teach this. That's exactly why this course exists. That's why we do these YouTube videos, because we teach Google Analytics. And I want you to check it out at analyticscourse.net.